In the 12th century, a radical Islamic fundamentalist sect conquered many parts of Europe, the Almohads, and they were giving a choice to the Jews that they conquered, either convert, publicly accept Islam, or die, or be put to the sword, as happened many times over the centuries by Muslims and Christians. Now we know that according to Judaism, one only has to die, one only has to give one's life rather than commit the three cardinal sins of shvichas damim, blood spilling, murder, <clears throat> gilu yarayas, forbidden sexual relationships, and avoda zara, idol worship. Now Islam is not idol worship. Islam, accepting Islam means declaring that one believes in Allah. Allah is the Arabic way of saying El, which is God's name. The Muslims believe in the one God, monotheism, pure monotheism, as much as we do. And accepting Islam also means saying that Muhammad is God's prophet and the Quran is true more than the Torah, has for Now that's not Avodah Zarah, that's not idol worship. <clears throat> it is denying certain fundamental ideas, principles of our theology of Torah, about Moshe's prophecy and about the truth of Torah, etc. But seemingly one doesn't have to give one's life for that, just publicly declaring it outside. If one inside one's heart, one's mind, at home, one continues to practice Judaism, you're just publicly declaring that you accept Muhammad as the prophet. Seemingly, what's the problem with that? Why does one have to give one's life? And so there were Jews in a certain community that were scared, that didn't want them and their wives and their children to die. And so they asked a certain rabbi in that area, do they have to die or can they publicly accept Islam and continue keeping Yiddishkeit, Judaism at home? And this particular rabbi said, very, very forcibly, no, you have to die. You have to die rather than becoming a Muslim. Ad kach, that you have to be willing to give your life rather than become Muslim. He said, and if a person accepts Islam, they can't come to shul, they can't get an aliyah, they have to be shunned, they're an apostate, even if it's a pain of death. And he completely like yelled at this community, you have to be willing to die, give your life for Hashem. Now the great Rambam, Maimonides, who he himself with his family, they had to run away from Spain because of this Islamic sect. A lot of people couldn't run away. But the Ramam heard about this rabbi, that he had said that people had to die or to give your life rather than accept Islam. And the Rambam wrote a very, very sharp letter known as Igeris Hashmad, the Epistle of Apostasy. And the Rambam uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically, completely yells and, and, and <clears throat> takes to task this rabbi, how could you say such a thing? He really is upset at this rabbi. He says very, very harsh words about how that he's stupid and how, how it's irresponsible he could write such a thing. And the rabbi goes on and on to say how Hashem never broke his covenant with the Jewish people throughout the generations, no matter what we did, no matter even if we did, uh, Jews converted to other religions, Hashem never broke his covenant with us, and on and on. The Ramav says, of course, accept Islam publicly rather than die. One doesn't have to die rather than accept Islam. One isn't going against of it as our idol worship. And therefore the Ramav Paskin, and this is, I guess we would say, halacha la this is what the halacha, this is what Jewish custom has always been, that almost always been to, to accept Islam, because it's not idol worship. But Reb Tzadik HaKoyen from Lublin, the Holy Koyen from Lublin asks, what was the other rabbi thinking? What was this rabbi that the Ramam was upset with thinking? And by the way, as Reb Tzadik himself says, <clears throat> the Radbaz actually paskins Allah Halamai, so the same thing. They want us to die rather than accept Islam. And he brings it from his Rebbe, the Ritva. So asks Reb Tzadik, Taka, why? There's no idol worship. So Reb Tzaddik says a very radical thing in the way that only Reb Tzaddik can. And by the way, <clears throat> I heard from my friend Reb Jay Orlinsky from Tinek that he, when he was a Bachar, when he was younger, he was in a shir of Rav Zevin Zatzal. And Rav Zevin said there were many years that this piece in Tzidka Zatzadik, this piece from Reb Tzaddik, the Sfasemis himself, the Gerib, the Sfasemis said they should not publish. It wasn't published for many years. It was considered too radical. Sfasemis himself said not to publish it. Says Reb Tzaddik because it's true. When it comes to keeping Torah and mitzvahs, there are only three sins one has to die for. But there's something even deeper and more important than Torah. How could we say that? What's, what could be more important than Torah? 
What's even deeper than Torah Mitzvah? And Rav says, deeper than Shabbos, deeper than Avarizara. You know what the deepest thing is? Being called a Jew. Being called part of Yisrael, part of Klal Yisrael. Says Reb Tzaddik, being called a Jew, being part of the Jewish people, that is deeper. That is even more important than Torah mitzvahs, of course, because Hasidus explains that although the Torah is written in a way that it's talking to us, but that itself shows you that the Torah was written for us, which means that even though Yisrael, Verisav, Kuchabruchu, Kulachad, God, Israel, and Torah are one, but Yisrael are higher in God's essence than Torah. Being called a Jew is the deepest, most important aspect of Yiddishkeit, even more than keeping Torah mitzvahs, being part of Klal Yisrael, being a Jew. And you know, for years, it always bothered me, I never understood, why is it that we're so pushy and, and careful and, 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 and anxious that even Jews that are not observant, religious, so to speak, even Jews that don't keep Torah, they should marry other Jews. We're so far in brimstone against intermarriage. Now, seemingly, if you think from just a pure halachic perspective, a Jew that's intimate with a, his wife, a Jewish woman, his wife, if they're not keeping the laws of family purity, if she's a nida, it's chiv karis, it's a terrible, terrible sin. One of the cardinal sins, seemingly. Mashenki, when a nezdogedach for man is with a non-Jewish woman, it's not as bad of a sin at all. Nowhere near it. And so seemingly, why do we want a non-religious person to marry a Jewish woman? It'll be nida. It'll be against taras and mishpacha. Might as well chas v'shon marry a non-Jewish woman. There won't be the problem of nida. And for years I didn't understand, and I never found it when I asked this question, but I finally realized that this is the idea because, you know, it's even deeper than keeping Torah, being a Jew. The problem of intermarriage is that the kids are not Jewish. The deepest thing that one could ever be in this world is being a Jew, being part of God's nation, being part of Klal Yisrael. There's nothing as meaningful and as deep in our connection to God as actually being called a Jew, which is why our enemies... They hate that word. They call us Jews. They, for them, Jew is a dirty word. And for us, it's the most beautiful word there is. You could be called smart, righteous, holy. None of those words come anywhere near as the greatest compliment, and that is being a Jew. Being a Jew. Like Daniel Pearl, we all remember that journalist, Daniel Pearl, was beheaded about 20 years ago by radical Muslim fundamentalists. And as he was himself was an observant person, but we know what was his last words before he was beheaded? I am a Jew. I am a Jew. He recognized that he's a Jew. He spoke about that there's a street in B'nai Brak named after his grandfather. He recognized in those last moments that he's a Jew. And you know, when we have that Jewish pride, that pride to be part of the Jewish nation, that is our deepest connection to God, that pride itself. You know, the Gemara says, <clears throat> if a potential convert wants to convert to Judaism, one of the things that Bezdin, that the court has to say to them is, why would you want to be part of the Jewish people? Don't you know Don't you know that the Jewish people in exile are verschlepped and verknacked and persecuted and hated and despised and why would you want to be part of the Jewish people? They suffer so much. And the convert has to say, I know. And halavai, if only I would merit to be part of that suffering, to be part of the Jewish people to be part of the Jewish people, and not just even though this suffering, but that suffering is the greatest merit, the greatest thing that one could ever achieve, suffering for being a Jew. Tanya is based on the fact that nobody would ever sin if one realized that by sinning, the whole possibility of sin is because I don't think that sin takes me away from my Yiddishkeit, but if I knew that a sin would take me away from Yiddishkeit, I would never do it. For a Jew being part of the Jewish people, there's nothing more beautiful and there's nothing more deeper because that, you know, even though pride is usually something we don't believe in in Judaism, we're against pride. But when it's pride, not from your own being, not from who you are as a person, but from being part of Klal Yisrael, 
thing, be, being part of the Am Oilam, the eternal nation of God, that pride shows that your soul is one with God in a way that's even deeper than Torah mitzvahs. That wanting to be part of Klai Yisrael, seeing the beauty of Klai Yisrael, that even after everything we've been through the past couple of weeks and how the world hates us, we're still by, by our get-togethers, our protests, this dancing and singing. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to go now to, to the White House, and I can't wait to be with so many other Jews. Do you see the difference between our protests, protests and their protests, and our soldiers and their soldiers, and our soldiers, when they conquer, they give water to the people in Gaza, they daven by the beach. Mikam Chisol, who's like the Jewish people? And Jewish pride, being proud to be a Jew, that shows that your soul is healthy, that it's one with God to such an extent that I feel that that's my ultimate pride. And very soon Mashiach's going to come, and those nations that support us, that are with us, will come with us together to, us, to ascend the mountain of the Lord, to come to Yerushalayim. And at that, that time we will see Hashem will reveal to the entire world that Mikam Chisrael, that there's no nation like the Jewish people, the Mamlechus Kainim, the Goy Kodesh, the kingdom of priests, the holy nation, may we finally see it today.